how you guys welcome back to the channel we're back so excited you guys because if you guys been following us if you haven't you slacking because we've been quite busy lately mm -hmm. we just got back off of world caribbean freedom of the seas yeah and we have thoughts so we thought as first time cruisers it'll be good to do a video on 10 tips we'll have for other Royal Caribbean first timers to help them out a little bit more. Yeah, we our our initial thoughts and and opinions about certain things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, like I said, it was our very first time, and we assumed that it was gonna be one way, and there was some kind of things that wasn't exactly what we expected. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, this is helpful, even if it's not your first time. So, if you're interested in knowing what we think. Our good tips to know going on a Royal Caribbean cruise line. Just keep on watching. Yes, we have ten tips, y'all. So let's let's give a little bit of background before we tell you what the tips are. We haven't cruised often. We only been on th two other cruises outside of this one. Yeah, so this was our third. In the two we've been on is Carnival, and I don't remember which Carnival ships. I don't remember at all. The first one was actually a family reunion so can you really count that one and the second one was kind of like someone that we got off of a, a what do you call those those timeshare listen for two hours or whatever yeah timeshare they try to sell you something and you say no pitch thing and we got it one from that and that was a whole nother disaster that's a story for another day i don't even remember the the cruise brand <laughs> no i don't remember the cruise brand, but i remember the pitch <laughs> it wasn't a big it wasn't a big brand right now, the first tip we would have is get the drink package. Now, David might have a little bit of a different opinion now having the uh, drink package. This is our first time doing drink package now. Yeah. And when we got, let's be transparent here. So when we got the drink package, the drink package was about $500. <laughs> now, it was 400 what? 445 445 Tax, gratuities, and all that. And we included. did four days. We went to Bahamas, Coco Cay, and from Miami and back to Miami. So that was four days. So depending on how long your cruise is, your drink package has to be for each day of the cruise mm -hmm. and for everybody in the cabin. Yeah. So. so if you don't know, like he said, everyone in the cabin has to have the drink package. If they're 21 and up. Mm -hmm. So that calculated to, what was it, like not $79 a day per person. Taxes gratuity, whole nine was $445. Yeah. Now that includes drinks. Starbucks. Your sodas. Yeah. Starbucks. Yeah. Lattes. Uh, milkshakes. Milkshakes. Yeah alcohol any alcohol that's fourteen dollars and under yeah and yeah so for me in my opinion i think you should get the drink package because it gives you the freedom of getting everything that you want that consists of a drink essentially now if you don't know if you get anything above fourteen dollars you would just pay the difference and they would charge that automatically to your account that you have on file with Coral caribbean but if you're going to get the drink package, make sure you're going to get your money's worth. So at the 445 price for our four day, three night cruise, that equated to five drinks a day or six drinks a day? Six. six so drinks to a day. make it worth it, you need to kind of break even. So that equates to six drinks a day. Now, this would be the advice though because i think david doesn't really necessarily feel like you should get the drink package but i'm saying get the drink package mm -hmm. because you get the freedom of getting any drink that you want but i will say if you do get the drink package don't feel like you have to drink alcohol that would be like my best advice because you can get starbucks drinks from the cafe promenade since we did Freedom of the Seas, you can get as much Starbucks as you want. That includes the espressos, the frappuccinos, the hot coffee, you know, every all those type of things. Talk about your sodas, your juices, or your milkshakes. I would I would stack up on those things first or in between your alcohol. Because at the end of the day, if you check the prices of these things, you will still get your money's worth instead of trying to dehydrate yourself with alcohol 
And I think that was our problem going into the ship. Well, well, me, yeah. <laughs> I definitely didn't take that advice until the last day. Right. The last day was the only day that I got something that wasn't alcohol. Right. I think even for me, I wish I would have only really drink when we was like eating and eating or doing something or even just at Coco K and then drink regular drinks in between in between those and like snacks and those type of things. Yeah, des- designate your drinking time. Now you might be like, well, there's soda packages or there's the uh, refresher package that covers the like drinks and those type of things. Yes, but then you're going to have to pay out of pocket per alcohol drink because mind you, our first day we did like seven drinks a piece. Mm-hmm. And we got on the boat late. So imagine if we got there on time. We got our money's worth. We definitely got our money's worth, but that would be the advice. Yeah. <laughs> why why do you think that it's not worth it? Um, it's not worth it if you don't like know what you want to drink going in. And the other part is the bartenders are a little inconsistent. Yeah. <laughs> so you may go to one spot and and get a margarita and then go to another bar and get order the same thing but it tastes totally different yeah i agree because remember when i was going through it i i actually had a challenge and i put this on my instagram if you don't follow my instagram please do at colors underscore isaac but um i was i put up a poll of what i should drink because i didn't really i ran out of ideas Mm -hmm. and i was told to order a bob marley mind you we're going to the bahamas so i figured that was something easy to order but none of them really knew how to make it how to make it (laughs) my drinks was coming out like not layered at all the first guy he asked me what the ingredients was i had to show him a video of how to make it and he still made it wrong Um, And then the second guy I knew, but then I really think he was finessing. I don't really think he really knew, but he wanted to know. Yep. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Because it came out like a dirty drink. It was odd. Like the drinks just didn't hit until, until I started when we got to Coco K and I just ordered like uh, well, I just got a Bud Light. A lot of the drinks that we ordered, we didn't like them. It was okay. Yeah. Only the ones we kind of really liked when we had the Coco Loco. Yeah. And um, Coco K. Yeah. And another thing I found was a lot of the people would not give us the alcohol we asked for. Yeah, you would uh, ask for a certain um, brand to mix it with and... You watch them put something else in it. So. No, well, in my case, I haven't seen them like put anything else. But when you taste it, you, if you're familiar with the drink, you know what it tastes like. Like one of the guys asked them to put Patron Margarita, and it clearly wasn't Patron in the drink. It's not And I think one time I asked for Hennessy, and it wasn't Hennessy in there. That's our thoughts on the drink package. But kind of rolling off of that, um, our next kind of 0.5 tip, there's not one tip, but this kind of like bonus tip, is don't forget your drink cups if you do get the drink package. These come with your package we obviously did not use them we literally just opened it now unwrapped them or whatever i can't even open just it. took it out of the wrapper like it was, <laughs> we didn't use it the whole trip how do you even open this i don't yeah it's eh. oh there we go okay it does screw off okay so this is kind of what the inside look like it has like that paper and inside royal caribbean so it comes with the packet so get it and also when you go to the bars they will fill this up with alcohol so if you want them to fill this up hand this to them and i've seen plenty of people do it even on coco k um they would use these cups and i was just like thank god because i actually really like this cup i am not a tumbler person (laughs) i want to be I want to be so bad, but it's something about reusable cups I, I'm weird about. 
But I still wanted it anyway because I'm sure, like, when we go to the beach and stuff, I love these type of things. Oh, we did have a question, so if you know, comment below. Like, is it the same cup on every Royal Caribbean cruise? Mm -hmm. And if you bought a drink package before, can you bring back the, the cup that you had on the previous cruise? Right. Use Wait, it? is this actually the soda cup? Yeah, is this, this is this is a soda cup. Okay, but how do they know? Because there's no, like, there's no barcode, barcode or anything like that. Yeah, so if you, if you know, if you, if you can bring this back on a future cruise, like, just comment below, let us know. Oh, next tip, since we were talking about Coco K, is do not take the towels from the boat to the island. They have their own towels. On the island. And you'll get like caught up in the mix like we did because you'll see everybody like going to get the towels before they get off the boat. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you don't want to lose that towel that you get from the boat because they scan it. And if you don't bring it back. They charge you like $25. So like we got in the line because they had a giant sign while we're exiting like get towels. So it was like, oh, I guess there's no towels on the island, so let's get the towels here. But come to find out that if you just get off the boat, there's towels on the island of Coco Cay or Perfect Day Coco Cay. So if you, you know, get towels there, you don't have to lug them around with you. And when we got the ones off the boat, we had to, like, carry them. And it's like, who wants to carry towels, whether they're wet dry or whatever i want to give it back to you so that i'm not lugging it around the island so that was pretty annoying and, yeah and i'll and i you i asked the guy on there like can we just give you this towel and then bring back whatever towel we get from your your stand here on the island to the boat and then he was like no i don't think you want to do that so no like the guy said <laughs> yeah no the guy said yeah but you say you didn't want to do that because you didn't trust i didn't trust it yeah or whatever but the towels do look exactly the same. And to be honest, they just kind of took the towels and just scanned my badge. So they didn't like scan the towel itself, but they scanned the fact that you were the person that took a towel. But honestly, like if, as long as you bring back a towel, I think you'll be 100% fine. But like, don't take it off the boat. And by the way, to return it, go to the pool deck because that wasn't clear either. If, if you got it from the boat, yeah, go. That kind of was the thing that annoyed me throughout the whole Royal Caribbean process was that there was no very clear sign, clear signage of anything that was going on. Like even going on the boat, it wasn't like, oh, go here to check for internet, go here, your keys are in the room, you know, or like f fifth floor is this. Like it, it's no signage to direct you coming in or throughout the whole place. Mm -hmm. It's like, Royal Caribbean kind of have like, it's kind of like the iPhones of cruise, of, ships. Of cruise ships. It's kind of <laughs> like, they kind of intend for you to just know already. And coming into it as new cruises is very intimidating because you don't know what's going on. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing, where you're supposed to be going. As in our experience with Carnival, it was very clear what we were doing, where we were going, who we can talk to to expect this, or even like events, they kind of have like events kind of sprawled throughout the uh, the cruise event in Royal Caribbean. That wasn't the case. You needed to like dedicate your life to the app <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to know anything. Yeah. And so the, our next tip is that when you are on Coco Cay, go to Chill Island and sit in the back. They had these, this bench area with like kind of this jungle background mm -hmm. and it was very nice. Oh yeah, so nice, so yeah. quiet, yeah. such a beautiful location to like, especially as a content creator, to film yourself mm -hmm. and feel like you're out of the way. And two, it's just like the background was so beautiful. I'm sure you can see it right now where it was just green and well shaded and just wonderful. It's right in front of uh, Chill Grill. Well, I'm not gonna say right in front, it's right on the right side of the building, but there's a clear sign that says Chill Grill on it and it's off to the side right before you get to the Oasis Lagoon. And it is such a nice location. It's about three or four that's just sitting along the back of this uh, bushy greenery area. The next tip bit that I have 
is talking about the Ren Jammer. The Wind Jammer? The Buffet. The Buffet. Mm -hmm. Now, going into it, if you've never been on their kind of like Royal Caribbean cruise ships, you wouldn't know that in the very front, as soon as you go on the Wind Jammer, there is like a mini buffet area. You would think that is just all of the area, but... And that's what I thought, too, because... <laughs> David I, thought I, that, but I, I wasn't going to grab nothing until I went in the whole building. I okay? was just I was just hungry. I grabbed the first thing I saw, so... Yeah. And then I sat down. Yeah, but <laughs> it's... You will find this out easily, but sometimes with the crowdedness, you might not know... To go in the back of the wind jammer, and that's where the main food is. And that's where the more like international food is as well. Like, right. It's expansive back there. Right. And also to check, you know, go on the opposite side that is the least full because this is that same thing. As well as like the omelette area, it's, it's exactly the same thing on both sides. So don't feel like you have to follow these people and follow this long line. On the opposite side, it's the exact same thing. So just look around and do the whole circle because you might be waiting in a long line for no reason. Yeah. This tip <laughs> is to basically check in early. I would recommend to check in at the earliest time if you do got a specialty dining uh, or any kind of like uh, concerns about your dining experience. Check on the boat early because when you check in on boat early, go to the main dining area on the on the floor that you get on the boat, and you there is a concierge person there that you can talk to and tell them like, hey, where you want to sit, uh, what reservations you want, where you want to eat at, and you can on, you can go to one concierge to book everything. When I went on the when we went on the boat, um, I had concerns about eating with people. I did not want to eat with people. In the main dining room. In the main dining room. Yeah. So I had emailed them a week earlier and asked them, can I have a two-person seat on the balcony seating on the top floor? Which is a part of another tip. I'm just going to tell you now because it goes hand in hand. This is another tip. You can request for them to seat you, not with other people and strangers. And I request to sit on the balcony of the third floor, which I can probably put a clip here. And being there was so nice and private. And honestly, when I emailed them a week earlier, they got back to me like the next day mm -hmm. and confirmed it. And I went to the county edge when we came on the boat and asked them if that's what I had. And he said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when we wanted to, and I think this was what you were trying to say, when we wanted to do Chops Grill... And to reserve a lunchtime because lunchtime is cheaper, but they have pretty much the same food. Um, it was all booked up for the whole week. So there was no lunch times available for and you And you can book you can book that day, like right after you check in, you can go straight to Chops Grill. And I didn't have no idea about that. Right. Yeah. You can book, but they only had dinner reservations available and we didn't want to pay for dinner reservation. So we opt out of any specialty dining. We just did main dining, which honestly, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> so my next tip kind of like all kind of blends into the same breath of things, but I just want to make sure there's a focal point on these moments. And that is, if you do come late, we came late. We came like to something, even though we did have a 1230 check-in check -in time. We... Let's not talk about it, <laughs> but we got that round too. But if you don't have any kind of specialty requests or concerns about your vacation trip on this cruise, just come late. Come late and don't check in your bag. Check and like take your bag with you. Come scrolling in at 1.30 or whatever and looking cute and proper, feeling nice, being very chill and roll your bag right into your room. I had created extra bags because I thought no matter what the time was, they was going to force take my bag and the room was going to be ready to 4 p.m. and all this stuff. And, it, and when we asked about it, because we didn't know what was going on, there was no signage or nothing. No. <laughs> and we had to go to guest services to be like, where, what do we do with our bags? Who because takes, nobody. Who takes our bags. We carry yeah. this bag, all these bags. Because there the was boat. no signage <laughs> yeah. in, in, in the standing area about baggage so we went in there like okay but who taking our bags where are we putting our bags and then the dude was looking at us like 
What do you mean? Yeah, like we were crazy. Like, like, take it, <laughs> <laughs> like, take it to your room. And he was in guest services, right? So he was kind of like, take it to your room. And then they was like, okay, but what do we get our key and you know everything like that? And he was like, it's in front of your door. And and luckily, I remember vaguely on a on a YouTube video, I seen that that the keys are in the front of the door. So I was like, oh, baby, it's just at the door. But there's but, like nobody. T- there's no yeah, directions. There's no, there's no yeah. direction because yeah. I was over here trying to get our luggage tax printed out so we can give our bags up, and nobody was like telling us nothing. Yeah, just letting you know, if you want to have a chill transition, just get on the boat, baby, at one, two o'clock, and then roll right to the room, and you'll be um, good. And honestly, next time I probably would still do that come earlier than what we did but I don't want to deal with luggage like my luggage getting dealt with because having all kind of technology and stuff I'd rather just keep one everything one bag and keep it pushing all right our next tip is about money right um check the app and look at your account for charges (laughs) because we had you know the drinking package on these cards and we went to Coco K and we were charged. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this is what it looks like yeah. when it says what drink package. So you just use this to uh, to show that you have the deluxe drink package. But yeah, we went to Coco K. We got we got our drinks. We, and then we uh, went somewhere and chilled out. And I just randomly looked at the app and I said, oh, we got charged. $15. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. What ended up happening was we went to, as soon as we got on Coco K, we went to go grab drinks in Chill Grill, and we had ordered some drinks, and I went to go sit down, and I didn't notice it then, but when we went by the beach, we got a drink that I suspect that someone was going to overcharge me. So when we looked at the account, that's when you said, what was that new charge? I just seen you scroll past, because David don't miss the money, so okay? Mm-hmm. David does not miss the money, so mm-hmm. I was like, what? And it was like $15 and something, whatever cents. And it was for a drink at Chill Grill. And they, my drink my drink was free. I got a drink the same time she got one. Same one. And for some reason, <laughs> I got the charge and he didn't. And the same guy made both of ours. And apparently, he overheard them say something about... They were having... Some one hour later. Disrespectful Cameron uncut <laughs> off on us. But pretty much finished what you were saying about the guy. You overheard him saying something? Yeah, that their uh, computer was having some technical difficulties. Mm-hmm. So, I so guess... So, I didn't overhear that part. But don't worry about explaining that to the people on the island. If you do see certain things wrong, just go ahead and go back to the boat and tell guest services, which what we did... And they just took it a ride off. And they didn't give us any issues or anything like that. Mm -mm. So our next tip is like if you don't, if you're not able to get your reservations at the specialty restaurants like us, Us. (laughs) (laughs) they do give you a little bit of options in the main dining room to get what you would have gotten in those restaurants. There's like three uh, choices from Chops Grill Mm -hmm. that you can add on. It's an extra charge. Um, but it would have been an extra charge anyways in the Yeah, and I find that you probably would have spent less money doing it in the main dining than in the Chops Grill. So our advice would be to if you want to try Chops Grill, at least for your first night, don't you don't have to do it in Chops Grill. Do it inside of main dining. Reserve your two person seat if that's what you want, or reserve the seats that you want. And you can have kind of like the Chops Grill experience, essentially, because it's more private. Mm-hmm. And then you get to get the food that you want. So I ended up ordering the Surf and Turf, which was the filet mignon and lobster, which was thirty four ninety nine. And I just got the lobster. And he just got lobster. Just I like think 16 16 yeah. 16 which nine. I was surprised on that. That was $16. So we spent like 50, $50 something dollars for um, specialty d- dinner. In the main dining. And yeah. I don't know, the main dining was more expensive than that. I think it was like 70 something. Yeah, for dinner for one night, it's like $50 per person. Per person, yeah. yeah. So we ended up spending $50 together by just sitting in the main dining and ordering the same food. And since we're on the topic of the main dining room, another tip is 
if you see like multiple appetizers that you like, mm-hmm. don't think that you only have to order one. Right. Right. Order one, maybe two. I don't there's really a, think there's a limit. No, <laughs> they just want to make sure you're eating it. Yeah. That's that's the only thing. Like the second night when we got our appetizers, there was two appetizers we wanted to try because I think that was more the Asian night. Mm-hmm. And we got the bao tacos and the coconut shrimp. Yeah. And we got that the exact same time. We ordered it two at a time. Mm-hmm. And we ate those and it was totally fine. And even if you're still hungry, mm-hmm. you can order it to go. Yeah, we did that too. They'll just give you a plate and put a cover on it and you just leave it in your room or, you know, some people leave it at their front door or whatever afterwards, but just do that. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of what you pay for. The next thing is, and I, David not going to like it, Mm -mm. but I'm going to vouch for it each and every time. Mm -hmm. Each and every time (laughs) because I'm going to get the internet package and I understand you can't turn off your phone, but I don't want to hear it, okay? Like, you don't want to feel like you're disconnected, especially if you have kids. Yeah. Oh, I'm not turning off my phone. Because yeah. one, I ain't, I got to know if something goes wrong with my kids who was being watched on land. And two, when it came to doing content creating, and I have experienced that for the first two cruises, but this is the first time we ordered the the internet package, and I would say get it. David don't like paying for it, but well, I'll get it. Well, this was the first time we did a cruise with kids. Like, we didn't have kids when we did our other cruises. Right. So This is true. That was That's the main reason um, I was okay with the internet packages. We did get to talk to the kids and see the kids. Mm-hmm. So that made it worth it. Um, but it's not cheap. <laughs> it's, it's not, <laughs> you see David's face and face. So, so, okay, first of all, David messed up. Because I we got didn't, it too late. He, yeah. Because he didn't order the internet package until we got on the boat. Don't mm. do that. Order it at home so that it's cheaper. So at home, it would have been like $18, $19 a day. But when we got there, it was like 20, 26 $27 something. 27 a day, yeah. A day. And then, so we ended up spending like 80 yeah, it was like $80 $81. for four days. So I think this, they, they charge us for three days. And for me, that that peace of mind is worth it. Because you know me, when I got on the boat, I had to call my kids. <laughs> David was like, listen, I'm on vacation. I needed that peace of mind. And then two, you can switch internet packages between yeah, so, one person. So, so you don't have to get multiple. Yeah, definitely another tip is just get one internet package. Mm-hmm. And then like if the other person wants to use their phone, you'll just... The, there's a button switch. to switch and it's easy right so you basically go inside the world Caribbean app and when you log into the internet package that you purchase you just log in and then it will say like hey you maxed out do you want to switch to this advice device and you'd be like yeah and then it switch to your phone and then you have internet and then you can see what's going on the next tip is places close early right <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> if you want to eat yeah i think this <laughs> This really shocked me, actually. And this is a big difference between... Carnival. Well, between going on a cruise now and when we went on a cruise, like, back in the day, you know, stuff used to be free, like, room service. Order it up. Well, I can't say that it's not. We can't say that it's not because we don't know that. There is an $8 fee. No, I, we know that they charge, but we can't say that's the difference before pandemic versus now. No. We can't say that because we don't know that. But one thing we can say is our experience on Carnival versus Royal Caribbean. We wasn't being charged for room service. And here we are. Now, I'm almost sure they probably do now because of the pandemic. Y'all can correct me down below if that is the case. But in our two experience being on Royal Caribbean, we was never charged for room service or whatever. And the thing that shocked us or, yeah, me did it yeah. shock you? No, not me. Either. Okay, it shocked me. Okay, <laughs> it shook me to my core was that the, everything closed at 9 o'clock. Well, we was going to eat at, sir. Okay, and I think the reason why I didn't shock him as much because he liked that pizza. I was eating the pizza. Yeah, the pizza's open late. What was that place <laughs> called? Sorrento. Okay, Sorrentos. so on the boat, there is the pizza. And let me tell you, everyone talking about the pizza and there's people liking the pizza. It was all right. 
I did not like this pizza. It wasn't the best or anything. Like, it was all right. Sorry, hold on. Ooh. I got an incident. Ooh. <laughs> it re never recognizes my makeup. Mm -mm. Oh, don't wear makeup when you go to TSA. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that is hilarious. Your ass will get pulled off to the side. <laughs> they try to figure out who you are. Yeah, they definitely blue lighted me. <laughs> Why they do me like that? I thought we was off the boat. Okay, so yeah, it shook me to my core that the place was closing at 9 p.m. And David liked the nasty pizza on that. And that pizza was not good, okay? <laughs> I looked at that pizza and knew immediately that it was not gonna be for me. It was oily and people like it and I'm confuzzled, okay? Confusion <laughs> to my core because the pizza was not given. And if y'all grew on that type of pizza, I'm so sorry. Oh, I am eating them. <laughs> my problem is, is that that's the only option after 9 p.m. What if I'm vegetarian? What if I'm gluten-free? What if, what if you know, what is my food option? My only food option after nine is to, is to order room service that's going to charge me gratuity plus 8%. Yeah, it's, it seemed like the pizza was the only thing that was always open. Mm -hmm. So, like, I went there multiple times a day. David did. Just, hey, because it's right next to our room. So, I'm like, all right, I'm hungry real quick. Let me right. Go. An advice, another tip and within a tip is to... Again, we kind of mentioned this early, but order in main dining. Order your food to go or go to Windjammer and get your food to go before 9 p.m. Let's say you got shows. You know you got shows that you're going to. You're going to go to Windjammer, make you some plates, put it in your room, and then go to your shows. And that way that when it goes past the time, when you're in these shows that you have food to go back to, you might be like, oh, my food is in it. Put a cover <laughs> on it, okay? You're fine. It ain't, it ain't no microwaves you're going to. You're going to have to get it how you live if you're trying to save money, in my opinion. So go go in main dining, order that food to go, put it in your room, go to Windjammer, or eat the food of main dining. Then after you're done in main dining, Go to Windjammer. Go to Windjammer, yeah. get that food to go, put it in your room. That was that was shocking to me. I said, why am I facilitating my time around getting food? Yeah, they definitely make it so like you're either gonna eat or you're gonna watch a show. Yeah. And if you watch a, if you're watching shows, they're back to back. Right. And it's really like nothing else you can do. So like you have to either choose this or that. And we did choose the 545 main dining time. Which I did like. How mm -hmm. would you feel about it? It was pretty good. It was our first time doing a five-something time. I think, I, I'm glad I did it like that because I think the eight o'clock time would have been one too late yeah. for us when it comes to dealing with shows because we would have had to miss out on some of the best shows to go to eat. And then I also think the eight o'clock time to eat was more congested than the five o'clock time in my opinion yeah there was definitely like empty tables and yeah. stuff like that it didn't feel overcrowded right we had the best seat in the house but you know. yeah i absolutely love my <laughs> seat and if you see from the videos if, you, if it's not in this video go watch our part one of our vacation video because definitely uh it was a nice sweet experience and i felt like to the waiter and waitresses was less exhausted. Mm -hmm. I feel like they was more energetic. Mm -hmm. They was more like attentive mm -hmm. than my experience when I had eight o'clock times when they feel like it's more the worked out yeah. and exhausted and stuff like that. So that's just another advice for you. Here's another one. Uh, I ain't read it yet, so go ahead. <laughs> but if if it is a, like a special occasion, your birthday or anniversary or whatever, just tell your waiter. You don't have to do anything like beforehand or anything like that. Just tell your waiter, in the and before you order your food, hey, it's our anniversary, mm -hmm. and they'll bring you out something extra and they'll sing you a song mm -hmm. and make you feel special, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was adamant on saying it because I wanted them to be aware of the experience they should give us when it comes to serving us. Yeah. So And I I felt like like I felt like it made them a lot more attentive 
to us. Like the manager came over to our table multiple times. Multiple times. Checking on us. And he remembered us. <laughs> yeah. He remembered us like the whole time. Like so I really like the experience they did give to us and I love the location they gave mm-hmm. to us and I like those two people. I wish I remember the name. I'm looking at the name tab, but it was it was like very hard to remember. I don't remember. But those two people are very good. Be nice to your waiter and waitresses and also uh, express to them how you feel about things. Don't hide things because those allow them to give you be- better experience, you know, for the next time they see you. Because when you go in these places, they're serving you the whole time. Mm-hmm. And they remember you. So allow them to get to know you, love on them, express on them, you know, or whatever, so that they have a good, you know, time serving you as well as you getting a good time back. Yes. One of the final advice that we have for this video is that go to the main dining prior to your um your dinner time to look at the dinner menu. And I know that you can somewhat see this and that, but it's not the same thing. Go to the area where you go to get to to enter into main dining and they have like a picture of what they're serving that night. If you are crunched on time, your best bet is to go there, see what you want, figure out your dinner menu. And that way, when you go there on that time and you know you got a show to go to, you will get expedited. Let me tell you, it makes it so much easier. Also, let them know that you have a show that you're trying to make it to. That way they won't have to, you know, be more relaxed on serving you your food. Because we did that our second night. And I swear, we got we, two yeah. appetizers, our entree, and our dessert party in 30 minutes. We got everything before everybody got their main entree. We were already done. Day three, we told them, like, hey... We're not trying to do nothing today. We're just trying to eat and go to our room and chillax. <laughs> you don't have to do all that. So I let them know as soon as I sit down. He said, you tired of drink? I said, we tired. We already know everything we want. Mm-hmm. The drinks, the appetizer, the entree. The, we know everything. Mm-hmm. So let's get to it. Even the manager came back around. He said, y'all tired today? I said, we tired. <laughs> we we want to chill out. So... If you want an expedited experience, you don't want to be there all day because I always hear about people saying, oh, you you know, you'll be there for a long time. If you know what you want ahead of time, you will get in and get out because I promise you, we did everything in like 30 minutes. If you know you really crushed on time, tell them when you order your food that you want your dessert to go. Yeah, yeah. Do that so that that way that would even cut your time down even more. But if I could talk about our whole experience as a whole, what do you think? Is there something that you would take away from your whole experience? How do you feel about it? You know, what would you change overall? What was your overall thoughts? My overall thoughts was it was a good cruise. Was it what I all that I expected? No. Uh, would I put it up there as like a top 10? No. What what but, would you put it at? But was it bad? It wasn't bad. I would put it as a... I would give it a 7. Okay. And I would probably give it a maybe a higher score if we had an extra day. Felt like the three... What did we do? We did four, four day, days. Four day, three yeah. night was one night too short. Mm-hmm. Um, because like right, right when we like started getting into the flow of things, it was like pretty much time to mm-hmm. rack it up and like I was feeling like <laughs> I was feeling I was feeling like kind of sick or just overly full like on that last day and I wish I just had like yeah, another that's not necessarily a boat thing that's yeah yeah for me I just wish I had another day to kind of mm-hmm. ease it out and then enjoy the boat mm-hmm. but the boat was super clean one of the things I look for is and when I go to the bathroom I look to see if there's like cups and mm-hmm. plates and stuff that people leave around. I didn't find any of that. Yeah. Like, spotless. It was clean. Everything was spotless. Our room was clean. Every place we went to felt yeah clean. Right? Like I said, the room service was <laughs> so that was a big plus for me. So I would give the I would give the overall experience a seven. Okay. Right. What I feel about the boat is that the boat is a family boat. When we got on the boat, it was packed. 
there was a packed out boat. Now, what I think is, let me tell you what the, what the things are overall, and then let me try to come up with a number. So, the shows were good. Shows were amazing. I wouldn't say amazing. No, the, the one show was amazing. Yeah. What, what show was that? Oh, my God. That was Once Upon a Time. The once Go upon to a that time. show, y'all. The Once Upon a Time show was amazing. Yeah, that was, oh, my God. If you've seen the Once Upon a, Cho- once upon a Time show, know that we into that. Yeah. Like We like theatrical. It, theatrical. Stuff, yeah. It was given. I would expect something like that more on a Disney boat. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely love that show. That show was great. The other shows were the, were cool. The game shows, they yeah, they were cool. I did like those. I didn't like the, the integration. Setup. That too. Yeah. I didn't like the integration with kids with that. Yeah, it's it like, like I didn't like that. <laughs> and then there was an awkward moment where it was kind of adult ish in front of kids, and I did not like that. I'm not gonna put them on blast. So, but I like the games. I like the games if it was specifically for adults, even though the activities itself it was kiddish. Yeah, and then the setup in the game in the area where they had the game shows was kind of weird. Like, yeah, it was facing against. He had some chairs that were facing the opposite side of the stage. Right. So it's like the one show I really, really liked. And I liked the other game shows too. I just didn't like that kids were there, which bring them down a notch. And then the the food, I like the dining, specialty dining, but the other food was just okay. And it's weird to say this, and I hate to say it because I know people rave like you don't need the specialty dining. You don't need the specialty dining. And we are cheap, okay? We don't like to spend our monies. But I'm telling you, I felt like our eating experience would have been better getting the specialty dining versus the main dining. Yeah, I still I still feel like that we kind of missed out on that experience. Right. So, and then thinking about the drinks, the drinks was just okay. Yeah. But the best drinks we had was in Placemaker, and technically, that's a specialty John in place. Another tip. Get your drinks from Playmakers, right? Yeah. We got a margaritas from there, and they were the best. They were the best drinks there. And we didn't get, get to Playmakers until the last day. The last day. So so that being said, but the, the shit was clean. Unfortunately, it was overpacked, so it's, we couldn't get like lounge chairs. Like we wanted to really hang out, yeah. And we couldn't really hang out because, yeah. mind you, it was a football game. I don't know why they chose to play a football game in the middle of day three, while because then everybody's gonna be up there. So yeah. it took up all the the. The floor, the chairs and everything. So we couldn't really sit. We couldn't get in the jacuzzi. The jacuzzi was packed the whole the ju- trip. The <laughs> whole trip. I mean, there was moments where we could have probably, but we had to get on the boat and immediately go in the jacuzzi. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to drink. So that we- being said, I would give it like a 6.8. <laughs> okay. I like, I like it because it's different. I like the Royal Promenade. We did miss the two adult shows, but I feel like I wish they had more adult geared things and then family geared things. I wish they had a better separation of that. And I did really like Coco K. Coco K was great. Yeah, yeah I really did like Coco K. You know, it was hard to find a spot to sit, but we did find a great spot to sit. And I don't know if you know this, and I feel like we're rambling at this point. Why is... Uh, Oasis Lagoon water so freezing. Freezing, yeah. It should, it's not heated at all. At all. <laughs> it is cold. And only the drunk people are getting through that. This is the party guys. pool, right? Yes. This is the party <laughs> pool. And we tried, okay, to get in the waters. And the waters was freezing, okay? We weren't drunk enough to be no, getting clearly, in that water. No, nope. Clearly, we was not okay. And <laughs> I said, them people are having a time. You would think that water is warm. No, ma'am. <laughs> so, that's why I give everything a 6.8. I feel like what saves it for me is, one, the Starbucks, two, once upon a time, three, uh, the food that we have from Specialty Dining and Coco K is what even gives it a 6.8. But I am willing to try other World Caribbean boats because I know all Ships aren't created equal, and I feel like just freedom of the seas is just not for us. 
So it's a one timer. Yeah, we don't need to do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. We don't do, need to do it again. I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, we're hoping that our next book will be Ooh. Virgin Voyages. Oh my God, I feel like we would eat. Okay, I do feel like they don't have a lot of shows though. I don't know that, but in my spirit, I feel like you come here to eat drink and relax so yeah if there's anything that we miss please comment down below or things that we should do going on our next world caribbean trip because we did see wonder of the seas and i'm hearing good things about that and there is that wonderland um dinner place that i really wanted to try that is on wonder of the seas mm. and it was not on freedom of the seas so i could tell that other boats are better than what we experienced so yeah but overall, it just felt so good. And I'm still extremely blessed that we were able to celebrate our relationship. And the shout outs to the mom-in-law, David's mom, for taking care of the kids. Holding it down. We will be doing more trips more often. So let us know the next trip or next boat that we should try. And, and destination. Like, and where did you go? Or where, would, where do you think we should go? Yes. Yeah. And if you got this far to the video, comment down a cruise boat and where we should try next. So definitely love you guys and see you guys in the next video.